Every year, a fashion house produces between four and ten collections. It's an endless cycle. How do they keep evolving while remaining loyal to the brand identity? Where do these designers go to seek out original ideas? For this summer's haute couture collection, Alexandre Vautier went back to the cinema. The collection is quite new romantic, the post-punk era at the beginning of the 80s, which was immortalized in that film with Bowie and Catherine Deneuve, The Hungers. It's a story of love and immortality, and for Alexandre Vautier, that's the perfect definition of fashion. It's about making people want to express themselves differently, let their imaginations run wild, and avoid being boxed into certain tribes or cliques, which are actually quite standardized. Vautier's taken it upon himself to weave a little of London's fabled eccentricity into the elegant Parisian aesthetic. You have to take creative risks once in a while, and they are just slight risks. It's not an all-out declaration of war. But yes, in a way, it's probably a bit risky to present something that people aren't necessarily expecting. But that's also how you succeed as well, catching people by surprise and making them want to embrace something else, or at least making them see things in a different way. For his second collection at Azaro, Maxime Simoens plunged into the label's archives, where he found, among other treasures, the racy photographs of Guy Baudin. There's a picture of a woman draped in fabric. It's very sensual. And I thought to myself, that's it. That's the spirit of the 70s. This wild, exotic feel, that social diversity. It makes me think of a woman who's exploring the savannah, a bit 1920s, a bit animalistic. But in that hallmark, 70s way, that was the golden age of Loris Azaro. Post-colonial nostalgia or an homage to the African continent. Either way, Simoen's menswear collection is made up of ultra-sophisticated looks, sparkling and embellished, just like the women's wear. There are no such talking points at Alexi Mobile and less storytelling. Here, it's all about the work and technical prowess. For couture, whether it's summer or winter, has never really mattered to me, apart from the odd fur or wool jacket. It's much more about showing off extraordinary things. This is a mix of embroidery with precious stones, metallic detail, the applique stitching on this fabric, which is a silk variation, so it's matty and shiny at the same time. There's a slightly pearlescent effect. And then there's the form that's being created to get these frills here. They're quite large, but they're weighty too, to give it some movement so that the dress moves exactly the way it was designed to. Dutch designer Iris van Herpen is not one to start with a sketchbook. Instead, she works alongside fine artists. For this summer's collection, she's collaborated with Peter Gentenaar, who creates sculptures modelled from paper and pulp, a texture she's translated into leather and silk with the help of 3D printers. I don't do any drawing, so I, all the garments that you see here are draped on a mannequin. So the um, draping process is quite um, unconscious. So before I start designing, I have no idea about uh, the silhouette yet. It, it's a natural process and I drape and I drape and I change and I change and there is this moment that I feel this is the white silhouette and then it's, then it's finished. So it's very unconscious based on a feeling. I don't think beforehand I want this silhouette. It doesn't work, no. No, I tried that, but it doesn't work for me, no. <laughs> In a similar vein, avant-garde Japanese designer Yuima Nakazato. His central idea is to sew without thread, zips or buttons. He makes staples to assemble his pieces like a puzzle, uniforms for urban astronauts. This collection is all made by the recycled materials, and especially we choose these poles to products, which is especially made for the the protection of the human body, mm -hmm. such as uh, airbags or parachutes or those kind of materials. And then we cut it by laser and then reassemble again to make a dress or jacket or those like MA1 or everything is made by um, recycled materials. I believe that as haute couture will be the future of the fashion. 
wrapping up this world tour of ideas, Chinese designer Guo Pei. In her studio in Beijing, more than 400 seamstresses put in up to 50,000 hours of work to produce these mysterious romantic creations. The theme of this collection comes from myths and legends, because I wanted to call the show Elysium. It's an island of joy and happiness, and what I wanted to do was share this experience of inner beauty with the audience. And since we're in a circus, what you'll see on stage is a dream. That's the main player. I chose the circus because it's an environment where nothing feels truly real. So just where do these designers get their ideas? From cinema, photography or fairy tales? Or quite simply, from their subconscious? Declared an autonomous state of Somalia in 1998, Puttland sits at the crossroads of major maritime routes. Pirates often raided ships carrying valuable cargo and held their crews for ransom. The European Union's armed forces have nearly put an end to these attacks. But the threat remains, as various jihadi factions ratchet up the violence, endangering Puntland's fragile stability. Join me for Puntland Revisited all this week on France24 and France24.com.